Welcome, and thank you for purchasing the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel pattern from the Costume Industry Coalition. This video will guide you through assembling the dress step by step. We'll begin with step one after you've cut out the dress. Our first step on the bodice is to prepare the inside corners on the front sleeve, piece C, seen here, and the bodice back, piece E. Stay stitch each piece separately on the stitching line, pivoting at the dot. You only need a couple of inches of stitching on either side of the dot. Then, clip the inside corner close to the stay stitch line. With right sides together, sew the center front bodice pieces A to the side front bodice pieces B on the princess line. Our personal preference is to work with the side fronts facing up and the center fronts underneath. Clip or notch the princess seam as needed, then softly press the seam open. Stiff fabrics may need more clipping than softer fabrics. You may wish to use a pressing ham on the curved seam, like these, to make pressing easier. With right sides together, sew side backs D to backs E from the waist to the large dot at the sleeve corner. Press open as you did for the front princess seams, clipping as needed. Pin front sleeve C to bodice front B from the large dot to the square. Take care when pinning to line up the dot with your stay stitched corner. Stitch, back stitching at both ends of the seam. Don't sew past the square or past the dot. With right sides together, sew your facings H to your bodice fronts, pivoting at the corner. Do not stitch past the square at the princess seam. After stitching, grade your seam allowance by cutting the facing seam allowance smaller than the dress seam allowance. Press your seam allowances toward the facing Then understitch, stitching your seam allowances to the facings. Get as close to the corner as you can, but note that you will be working in two sections. The section on the long front edge of the bodice and the section across the top. Clip across your corner to remove bulk. Then turn your facing and press your bodice fronts. Sew 
Sew your bodice front to your bodice back at the shoulder seam, located on pieces C and E. Press open. You may wish to clip stiff fabrics, but we recommend that you do so only if you've already fit a muslin mock-up. Otherwise, wait until you have checked the fit to clip your shoulder seam. A ham may be helpful in pressing. Sew your bodice back neck facing, piece G, to your sleeve front facing, piece H, at the facing shoulder seam. Press open. Starting about one and a half inches away from your center back, sew your neck facing, pieces G and H, to your bodice back and sleeve front, pieces E and C, at the neckline. Match your shoulder seams and stop at the large dot on piece C. Backstitch at the dot. Check to be sure you haven't caught your dress seam allowance at the dot corner. Note that we've left part of the facing unsewn at the back for one and a half inches. We'll finish this after the zipper goes in. Grade your seam allowances and press your seam allowances and facings as before with the seam allowance pointing toward the facings. Understitch. Stop your understitch three inches from the center back. This will allow you to complete the facing seam after the zipper goes in. We'll finish the understitch after we've finished stitching the facing. Next, we close the side seam, the underarm seam, and the bottom part of the armhole. First, sew your side front B to your side back D at the side seam. Then, sew the front sleeve C to the back E at the underarm seam. Press both seams open. You should now be able to see the sleeve and the bodice clearly with a hole at the bottom part of the armhole. Next, we close that armhole seam. Pin carefully, matching your side seams and the underarm seams between the large dots at the front and at the back. Stitch from corner to corner. Be sure to backstitch at the dots and check to be sure that your corners meet. Up until this point, we've been working on the right and left sides of the bodice separately. Now, it's time to join them together at the front overlap. Start by carefully lining up your center fronts. It helps to thread mark them first. Lap the right side of the bodice over the left and pin. Then pin the right front edge to the left bodice front along the fold at the facing seam. Now, pull out your center front pins and flip your right front over along the pinned facing fold. Repin for stitching in the ditch of the facing seam.
then pull out your second set of pins, then stitch the right front bodice to the left, stitching from the waist to the neckline. Finally, stay stitch the right front bodice to the left at the waist seam at 3 8 seam allowance. This is what it should look like when you're finished. Press up your sleeve hems at one and a quarter inches and hand sew or baste for your fitting. Thread trace your pleat lines on your skirt front, skirt side front, and skirt back pieces. Pin your skirt front and skirt side front pieces together at the side front seams. Stitch. Press pressing your seam allowances toward the center front. Matching your pleat lines on the skirt center front to the lines on the skirt side front. Pin with right sides together. And stitch on the pleat line down to the dot. Lightly steam your pleats in place, matching your pleat lines below the stitched portion. Hover your iron just above the fold and steam rather than pressing with a hard crease. If you prefer, take a clean folded towel and lay the fold along your pleat line. This will allow you to press a soft fold in without making a crease. Repeat this step for your skirt back pleats. Here we see the skirt front and skirt back complete, ready for the side seams and pockets. Place a one inch wide strip of iron on interfacing between the notches on each skirt front side seam. Your interfacing should extend about a half an inch beyond the notches on both ends. With right sides together, sew a single layer of your pocket to the skirt front at the side seam from notch to notch. Backstitch at both ends, then clip your skirt side seam at the notches. Press your pocket front to the inside. With right sides together, stitch your pocket backs to your pocket fronts around the outside edge of the pocket. Make sure to leave your pocket back side seam seam allowance free. We'll need it when we go to sew the skirt back to the skirt front. Pin your skirt backs to your skirt fronts at the side seam. Notice that your back pocket side seam fills in the gap that the pocket front left when we pressed and clipped. We prefer to pin matching at the top and working toward the hem, but to stitch from the hem to the waist wide to narrow. This avoids stretching the side seam too much. It's easy to sew your pocket closed by accident, so we recommend drawing your stitching line, pinning on it parallel to the edge, and checking your pinning before you stitch. You may wish to use a one-sided or an adjustable zipper foot, especially if you're working with velvet or another thicker fabric.
Now it's time to stitch your skirt to your bodice, matching your center fronts and your side seams. After stitching, press open. You will need to clip your seam allowance to allow the skirt seam allowance to flare open below the waist seam. You may also wish to clip your bodice seams by your front facings to allow the front bodice seam allowance to point down between the facings, reducing the bulk at the waist. Stitch your center back seam in the skirt from the hem to the triple notch. Press open. Now we're ready to put in the zipper. If you're using an invisible zipper and have an invisible zipper foot, you may wish to stitch the center back seam after installing the zipper. Follow the directions that came with your foot. If you are using an invisible zipper and have an adjustable or one-sided zipper foot, start by pressing the roll on your zipper flat with your iron on low. Ideally, your zipper is one to two inches longer than your opening as it's quite difficult to stitch close to the teeth next to the zipper pull. We highly recommend thread tracing your center back lines. Starting with the right side of the zipper, set your teeth a quarter to a half inch down from the stitching line at the neck. This will leave room for a hook. Make sure that the end of your zipper tape crosses your stitching line so that it will be cleaned by the facing. We don't tend to use a lot of pins on an invisible zipper since they get in the way. We use the thread trace as a guide. Stitch the right side of your zipper close to the teeth in the roll of the zipper. Don't get too close to the teeth at the waist seam. Backstitch at the base of the zipper. Now, close your zipper and mark the waist, base, and top of the zipper tape on both sides of the tape. Keep your zipper closed for a moment to keep it from twisting while you line up the waist and the top. Then, open the zipper and pin the waist and top for stitching. Move your foot to the other side and stitch. Now, thread your zipper pull through the gap at the bottom of the zipper to the face. Close your zipper and make a thread stop at your zipper base. Trim your zipper if needed. Finish stitching your back neck facing, which will clean the top of your zipper. Then finish the understitch on the facing. Then turn your facing seam allowance in at the zipper and slip stitch. Now it's time to fit your dress. Do this with the shoes you plan to wear as well as the bra and any foundation garments you will wear with the dress. We shortened Daniela's sleeves a little bit in the final fitting. How do you feel? Very good. You look great. What do we think about? What? Mark your hem an even distance from the floor all the way around, paying special attention to the side seams, which may have stretched. Trim your hem allowance to a uniform width. We recommend one and a quarter inches. You may need an easing stitch to be able to hem your dress smoothly. This is a long machine easing stitch, about a quarter inch from your cut edge. Use this stitch to ease in the cut edge as needed. Hem your dress. If you have a serger, you can serge the raw edge and do a blind hem as shown here. Otherwise, turn your raw edge at the easing line and slip stitch. If you haven't already hemmed your sleeves, hem them now. If you wish to line your skirt, 
start by preparing your lining pattern. Join your skirt front to your skirt side front, folding out the pleat and taping together. Fold out the back pleat as well and tape. Cut your lining and stitch the side seams and the center back below the triple notch. To put your lining in the dress, start by turning your dress inside out and fold the bodice down inside the dress. Now, put your lining inside the dress with the right side out toward the wrong side of the bodice. Pin your lining to the skirt seam allowance only, leaving your bodice seam allowance free, pointing down with the bodice. Match your seams and leave about one and a half inches open at the backs. Now, stitch your lining to the skirt seam allowance. You may wish to use a zipper foot. When you've finished, turn your lining to the inside of the dress and pin the backs by the zipper. Slip stitch. Finally, hem your lining by machine a half inch shorter than your dress hem. We like to use a one inch hem allowance and turn it twice at a half an inch as you see here. Next, sew a small hook and eye at the top of the zipper. You may wish to cross stitch your facings to the flat lining or to stitch them to the bodice seam allowances to keep them from flipping out. There are two ways to make your belt, with or without eyelets. To begin, apply Wonder Under or another fusible bonding web to one side of your belting interfacing. Now, Fuse your belting to your belt face fabric according to the manufacturer's directions. Then, fuse easy steam or half-inch strips of Wonder Under or other bonding web to the long edges of the interfacing, right at the edge. We prefer easy steam for this step because it's pressure sensitive and very easy to work with. Keeping the seam allowance tight, bend your seam allowance around the belting and fuse it to the wrong side. Then repeat the process for the point, one side of the point at a time. Cut your grosgrain ribbon two inches longer than your belt and fuse Wonder Under to one side. Then, turning your ends under as you work, fuse the ribbon to the back of the belt. When you get to the point, trim your ribbon to a half inch seam allowance, then press your edges under.
edge stitch or slip stitch your ribbon in place. An edge stitch is more suitable for a casual look, while a slip stitch tends to suit a cocktail look better. If you want eyelets for your belt, they can be either metal or thread eyelets. To mark the placement, measure 4 inches from the point to mark the center eyelet, then mark an eyelet 1 inch to either side. To fine tune your belt length, measure from the center bar of your buckle to its inside edge. Then add that measurement to your waist measurement, then add 1 inch for wearing ease. This is your finished belt length. Starting at your center eyelet, measure that distance to the opposite end of the belt and mark a line. This line is the center of the buttonhole for the buckle tongue. Mark a one inch buttonhole with the ends a half inch to either side of the line. Make your buttonhole, then feed the belt around the tongue of the buckle. Sew the end of the belt to the back by hand or by machine. If you do not wish to do eyelets, remove the tongue from your buckle. We will close this belt with hooks. Slide your buckle onto the top face of the belt, placing the center bar three inches from the point. Cut a two inch long piece of your grosgrain ribbon and sew two hooks with their heads at the center of your ribbon. Turn your ends under and pin your grosgrain to the belt centering the hooks over the center bar. Sew your ribbon to your belt. Now, measure from your hooks to a distance one inch longer than your waist measurement. Mark a line and sew two bars to your belt on this line. We hope that you've enjoyed making your marvelous Mrs. Maisel dress as much as we've enjoyed teaching you how to make it. If you have questions, comment down below or reach out to us on Facebook or Instagram. Wear your dress in good health and from the bottoms of our hearts, thank you for your support of the Costume Industry Coalition.